So hello everyone. Today we will understand how our RAM works and what is the architecture of our RAM. So in industry, it is commonly referred to as DRAM, but in the consumer market, DRAM is known as RAM. So the very first question that comes to our mind is why do we need RAMs? So we need RAM because they are much much faster compared to our secondary storage. And if we will directly send the data from secondary storage to the CPU, our CPU has to wait a lot of time. and it will sit idle which will decrease our performance so let's begin with the technical details so the very first technical detail that i would like to share is the channel of the dram is of 64 bit which means at a time 64 bit of data can be transferred from our ram to the cpu okay and the other thing that i want to probably highlight is when cpu requests a particular address from dram right now this address belongs to a chunk of 64 byte right rather than 64 bit right this should be noted out that this address belongs to a 64 byte data right and a dram how will our dram send the 64 byte data it will simply send this 64 bit data eight times so first initially 64 bit is sent and then it is sent 8 times so our data will become 64 byte right so uh, so if we accumulate this uh, 64 bit data 8 times then we will get our 64 byte data now why do we need 64 byte why because the question the answer lies in the fact that whenever we access a particular memory address let's say this address was of 1 byte okay this address was of 1 byte then it is highly probable that nearby address cells will be accessed nearby data will be accessed so by doing research the sweet spot was declared as a 64 byte chunk so whenever a data is fetched from the dram it belongs to uh, i mean whenever an address is sent to the cpu for fetching the data the address belongs to a 64 byte chunk and 64 byte is transferred from the ram to the cpu so let's move ahead and discuss the architecture of dram now in this figure we can see that these all black chips actually are our storage devices these are the chips which store our data and inside each of these chips we have multiple banks and inside each of these banks we have multiple i mean we have rows and columns where the intersection of every row and column means a single bit okay so let's move ahead and see uh, more so over here in this picture we can see that uh, most of the figures are same as compared to previous slide but uh, we will just quickly hello that each of the chip is having a different banks and inside each of the bank now the there is a difference over here there is a multiple rows and columns actually so i mean there are multiple collection of rows and columns so over here we can see that this is single there is this is one block this is another block and there are eight such blocks in this particular bank and for each of these particular blocks uh, for each of these particular blocks we actually have a different sense amplifier now we will understand the role of sense amplifier a little bit later in li little bit later in the video okay and let's begin uh, let's go ahead and the horizontal lines inside each of this uh, so the horizontal line inside each of the block is actually called as a word line and the vertical line is actually referred to as a bit line now why bit line because this using this bit line we actually transfer a single bit of data and we will deep dive how the data is transferred just a little later before we understand before that we will understand how actually a single bit is stored so when we see this particular intersection of the rows and columns right when when we see this the each of the intersection actually means a single bit now how this a how a single bit is stored so over here we this is the structure of a single bit okay so each of the bit is stored in something like this where this is a transistor which acts as a gate okay now using this gate only we will get to know whether the data stored inside the cell is a 0 or a 1 now how do we identify whether it is a 0 or 1 then the role of capacitor comes in so this is a capacitor now when the capacitor is holding some charge it is referred to as a 1 and when the capacitor does not have any charge it is referred to as a 0 fine 
so like that we actually know uh, whether it is a zero or a one inside this particular cell and let's go ahead and understand the role of these word lines and bit lines and how the data is read from the uh, from the DRAM let's see so in this figure we can see that there are multiple cells so this this is representing a single block okay this is representing a single block and uh, Inside each of the block, we can see the structure that it is storing a single bit in each of the consecutive cells. So let's begin how the data is. So before that, we will, I will just quickly show that the vertical lines are called bit lines and the horizontal lines are called word lines. Now to read the data, what actually happens is the very first thing that happens to read the data is we activate this particular word line. So let's say I want to read the data from these cells. So what I will do, I will activate this word line. By activating, what do we mean? I act a little bit of voltage. I send a little bit of charge through this line. Now, what this charge do is it activates this particular gate. Okay, the particular gate is activated. And this by what happens after activating the particular gate. So in all of these cells, my gate will be activated, which means uh, the charge from capacitor can flow into these bit lines, right? And as soon as the word line is activated, all of the charge, all of the charge from these capacitors starts to flow in this bit line, right? Now we can see in the cells, which does not have any charge, there is no charge flowing through these bit lines, right? But in the, in the bit lines, in the, in the capacitor, which is holding some charge, now these bit lines will start to flow the charge because the circuit is complete, right? Because this gate is open and now our charge can flow in this direction in this particular bit line. So, so like this, we actually identify which cells is having zero and which cells is having one, right? Now the role of sense amplifier comes in and the sense, what the sense amplifier do is it senses these particular bit lines, like which bit line is having a charge and which bit lines are not having a charge right and after sensing it it stores it and one thing to be noted over here is that as the data is sent i mean as the charge is flowed from the capacitor to this bit line our capacitor gets discharged right our capacitor gets discharged now it no longer holds the data that it previously had all of the data is stored in this sense amplifier okay and we will get uh, we will so after reading let's say so we have the data in our sense amplifier and after reading the data, what I will do is I will write this data back into these cells. Okay. So that my data is not lost over here. I will recharge my capacitor because I know that this particular cell stores a bit value one. So I will send the charge back to these cells and our capacitor will get charged by one volt. I mean, three volt or 1.5 volt, whatever. So, and my capacitor will get charged so that my data does not get lost. Okay. And let's go forward and see how a 64 byte data is transferred right because our goal was goal was to send 64 byte data to the cpu so we will see how a 64 byte data is transferred fine so in this figure we so in this figure we know that uh, there is a bank inside each of these shapes and each of the bank have multiple rows and columns and uh, whenever we i mean whenever we want to send our data we activate a word line so this particular process of activating a word line is also called as row activate and what this row activate does is now as soon as my row act row is activated uh, for each of these particular collection of rows and columns we have a sense amplifiers we have sense amplifiers right and as soon as this row activated row is activated in all of these collections so this row is particular row so this row is activated over here this row is activated in this collection this row is activated in this collection and similarly in all of these collections these a same row is activated in all of these collections so data from all of these collections is loaded into the sense amplifiers in their corresponding sense amplifiers and now what happens is this particular process not only happens in this particular chip this particular process happens in all of the chips, right? This chip, this chip. So all of these chips, the same process goes on. And let's say over here, we can see that the third row, the third row is activated. So in all of the chips, 
third row will be activated right so we can say that they all all the chips share a single common word line right so all of these word lines are going through all of these chips so when we want to activate this word line this particular word line will be activated in this chip this chip in all of the chips so what will happen in all of the chips my data will be loaded into their corresponding sense amplifiers right and now when i want to send the data what i will do is from the sense amplifier right from this particular sense amplifier we can see if we access the very first column of each of the sense amplifier we can get 8 bits of data right we can get 8 bits of data and but this 8 bit is from single chip this is from single chip and uh, over in so in all of these chips we will be sending 8 bits of data see so from this chip we will be sending 8 bit of data so together we will send a 64 bit data in a single go okay in a single go we sent a 64 bit of data and when we want to move ahead what we will do so after my 64 bit data is transferred but the my end goal was i want to send 64 byte which means that from 64 i mean i mean what we want to send is uh, so we have 64 bit cross 8 beta to send and we have already sent 164 bit which means remaining 64 remaining 764 bits are remaining so what we will do is we will now move on to the very next column of the sense amplifiers in each of the chips in each of the chips right now the 8 bits will be transferred from the very next column so again 8 bit will be transferred again 8 bit will be transferred so again my 64 bit is transferred so for now until until now what i have sent is 8 byte plus 8 byte so i have sent 8 byte two times now this process will continue for uh, now this process will continue up to uh, until my 64 byte of data is transferred or i have sent 8 byte eight times okay so this is the process that dram follows to send the data from the dram to the cpu